So today our topic is Map Foundation Design. The brief topics uh, that we're going to be going through today, we're, we're going to start with an introduction and talk about the historical perspectives of the history of Map Foundation Design. It's helpful to understand how those have um, developed into the procedures that we use today. There's some interesting lessons learned we can take away from what we've done in the past. We're going to talk about the critical soil properties that you need to be defined in order to design a map foundation and how you can work with a geotechnical engineer to get those values. We're going to talk briefly about soil structure interaction at, at a high level. Uh, then we'll have a break and we'll talk about proportioning and preliminary design, some load combination discussion, analysis, We'll have another break at that point, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up with some design issues, detailing, and then a discussion of constructability. So first, it's important to recognize how map foundation design has changed over the years in terms of um, the framework that we use today. Specifically, over the last 25 years, what's really changed is advanced analysis procedures, uh, better understanding of plate mechanics and material properties. Those are all kind of what I'd categorize as knowns, things we understand pretty well, we think. But you need to keep in mind there's still a lot of unknowns in the world of map foundation design, specifically what's happening underground. It's really soil properties is, is the biggest one. It's how do you characterize soil properties in a way that's simple enough for map foundation analysis, but comprehensive enough to capture the actual behavior that you need it to include. And it may be a combination of a number of different layers of soil with all kinds of different properties uh, that also vary with time and, and loading that make it very difficult to um, accurately define the soil properties enough to design a map foundation. Another unknown to some degree is demand levels and especially in, in seismic. I think wind is relatively well understood but seismic is more challenging in terms of what load does the map foundation actually see and it depends a lot on the lateral system, um, a number of other boundary conditions, uh, backstay effects, analysis assumptions, things like that, and, and then in addition to just the fundamental seismic demand level that you should be designing for compared to the superstructure. Uh, and then the other unknown is, is shear size effects. It's re just related to the size of map foundations. You know, it's generally considered that large map foundations, especially taller buildings, have not particularly been tested in a real um, uh, maximum loading case, like an MCE condition. Um, there, there's been some research done on some deep sections uh, for shear, and it's been shown that uh, the typical two squares of FPMC that you might use for a map foundation just for, for proportioning may not be applicable, and we'll talk about that a little bit further, but that's also categorized as a bit of a known or an uncertainty that we need to keep in mind. So just to high level, what is a map foundation? Well, it's a specific type of shallow foundation that uses the capacity of the soil transmit building loads to the subgrade. Um, there's many types of map foundations. It could encompass all of a building's footprint. It could just encompass portions of the lateral system and some columns, some combination of that. It's commonly used in conditions where you have soil or loading that lead to differential settlement concerns. It allows you to lock in um, the, the majority of the structure to a stiff base that helps control differential and total settlement. And it's also relatively common when you're doing a bathtub system like below the water table where you need to create a watertight structure. Um, the structure itself isn't watertight, but the waterproofing system makes it such. And the mat foundation um, is helpful in that condition as well. So from historical perspectives, um, I, I, I consider it in three different um, three different categories here. The first is what, what we understand about soil structure interaction, the assumptions about rigid body behavior, and then it's it's really the limitations of the computational methods of the time. So in the pre-1980s, that's, that's kind of the first category I talk about, is the way map foundations were analyzed, it was typically an envelope of a very simplified soil pressure di distribution. So they would analyze a, a map foundation with a uniform pressure distribution, and then it analyzed with a varying pressure distribution. And it might just have a factor of two of a difference between the minimum and the maximum pressure distribution. And there's some diagrams there on the right that give you an idea of what those might look like depending on the type of soil. And many times it was just treated as an inverted slab fundamentally. It's you know designing them for the shears and moments with flat slab coefficients. Um, and then many times they would just throw the same reinforcement at the top and bottom. And this is really a recognition of how approximate the results are um, and how approximate the analysis is. 
the, the challenge with these methods that they use is they really didn't have the ability to predict settlement. So then you go to the post-1980s, which is when finite element and finite difference methods started to be used. Um, and this allowed you to consider both a rigid body design and a flexible plate design and understand the differences between the two. Uh, this, this also recognized a challenge between linking the service level bearing pressures to the strength-based concrete section design. And so in the 80s, it was commonly done with a pseudo factor to scale up service level bearing pressures to a strength level in order to design the concrete section. And there's some challenges associated with this, which we'll talk about in our load combination discussion.